Hello, I'm Steph Jo, I'm one of the artists of Immortal Bloom and today we're going to be making biodegradable 3D herb pots. Now I got the idea from when I was in primary school and this is what I made but it's not biodegradable but they last for years. This is 25 years old. But because we're trying to be more conscious of the earth and its condition, I wanted to recreate one which can be decomposed and put back into the earth. So it's biodegradable because it's made from paper, flour, and food coloring and spices. And that's all, and some water. So all of this can be taken apart, soaked in water and can be put straight in the compost. And then the jar can go into recycling or you can reuse it for something else if you don't want it anymore. There is also a biodegradable glue you can get which you can use as a gloss for after if you want to preserve it more. And I will put all the details in the video description below. So you're going to need a jar, um, preferably not too small because you need the herbs to be able to grow. You need a tetra pack of some sort. I'm using oat milk. I'm going to need flour. You can use any kind of flour. I'm just using plain flour. A tall glass of water. I'm going to need a tub for mixing. This is to mix the paste in. You need a paintbrush, some scissors, a plate, and a, and a tablespoon, which we'll be using for measuring. And then you will need your food colouring. I've got green and blue, and then chilli, chilli powder like that because it's nice and red and dark and you will need some turmeric and you'll need your papers and you need a piece of card which fits in the jar like that and yeah any trays just to put stuff in and to keep tidy when collecting your papers Make sure that they are recyclable, otherwise they're not decompostable. Now, you'll know this with the universal recycling sign. There it is, the little arrows, the three arrows. And if you can't see a recyclable symbol on there, then you can do a test where you crumple the paper up like this and if it holds its shape then it's recyclable so now I'm gonna make some space and just move away anything I'm not going to use right now so okay so now we're going to deconstruct the tetra pack we can't use it as it is because there is a thin layer of plastic film on the inside and the outside so we need to get to that paper the cardboard which is in between so this is how you do it so we're just gonna feel around it build corners and find the flaps these and we're gonna put your fingers under and then feel it and you can hear it and then pull it up and there's your flap and there's your other one and then you're going to find the bottom ones which are underneath the pack so again pull feel it find the gap put your fingers underneath and yep yeah, pull there you go and I'm going to squeeze it to get the air out. 
Um, there you go, it's flattened now like this. And then you'll need your scissors, like this. And then we're gonna start to cut from the right side first. So from the bottom of the edge, and go all the way up. So that you can see, you make the, the opening there, the entrance. I'm going to do the same at the other side, from the bottom up to the top, and then, yep, you have an opening right there. You can even put your arm through it. <laughs> okay. Now what you can do is find any any anywhere, anywhere you like. Place your scissors, and we're going to cut from the bottom to the top upwards. So, all the way. Like this. And now it's one flat sheet. Now, where the crease is in the middle, you can feel it. If you bend it, it'll easily bend. We're going to cut along there, so from top to bottom again, like this. And then we're going to get those two pieces, put them together, it doesn't have to be straight. And again, we're going to just cut in the middle, just find doesn't have to be exact, it's just so we have more pieces and it's easier to pull apart. So. Like this. Okay, now we have four pieces. Okay. Now, you're gonna find the corners so just feel where the corners are. So with your nails, you're gonna try find the plastic film, like that, and that's come up like that from the corner. And it should just peel off. If you just peel it off slowly, and then just, Gently. Like this. There you go, that's one piece of film down. Now we're gonna do the same and find the outside piece of plastic film. So we're gonna find the corner again. You can feel it. And then we're gonna find the edge of the opening there. Use your nails. Again, peel it slowly. Ah, there we go. There it is lovely piece of paper there for us. Then you're gonna put your film to one side and we're just gonna to have to put that in the bin because it's not recyclable. Okay, so we're gonna do the same with all the others. So again, do, 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 find it, find it. Here's your nail. So one of these pieces is going to have the, the nozzle piece, 
inside. So we're going to just simply cut, cut around it. And then we'll just throw that away because it's non-recyclable. And yep, same thing. Nice and satisfying. And there we have our papers. Okay, now we're gonna do the preparation for the paper mache. So we're gonna need the paper. And if you have the newspaper or magazine paper, then that's the best one to use because it's the most flat. And we're gonna need your jar. And then we're just gonna make some strips. So you can cut from top to bottom down there. And it doesn't matter what size the strips will be, they're just, you were just gonna cut. As you can see, probably make them a bit, I'm gonna cut them shorter just so it makes it easier for when we make the paste. It's just a more suitable size. Like that. Like that. They don't need to be neat, just need to be strips. So we're just going to put them in a pile, neaten it up, and then put these in a pile, put them to one side. We're going to use some paper where it's white, just so it makes it more of a blank canvas to paint on, so the colour will show up better. So I'm just going to decrinkle the paper. So just use your hands and just, just massage it. And then again, we're just gonna make some strips. Okay, so I'm gonna cut from here to here, one side to the other. And then with this piece, again, I'm just going to cut from one side to the other, again. It doesn't need to be any specific size, it just needs to be in strips. It doesn't need to be neat, it just literally needs to be strips. So don't worry if it's all tattered on the edges, because we just need it to be... like this in length form. So look, we've got edges here. It's not a problem. Just gonna flatten out anything that sticks out, so. There you go, like that. And yeah, I'm just gonna do the same with the whole piece. You see here, just a really random looking piece. Again, it's okay, it's, we just need it for the base. Okay, I think that'll be enough. Should be good. So I'm just gonna collect all the pieces which will be white. Like that. So roughly about Six big white strips and 
about 15 strips of newspaper, roughly. Now we're going to be making the paste. So you'll need a tablespoon, your container, and a large glass of water. Just put our scissors over here in a safe place. And we're gonna need the flour. Like this. And your jar. There we go. Now. Okay, now measurements wise, if you just get your tablespoon and just go in to the flour, take a big heap like this and just put it in. One, two big heaps like that. And then we're going to slowly add water. So pick up your glass and I'm just gonna pour some on the spoon, a tablespoon, so that it's full, and pour it in. And just gonna mix that in slowly. Like this. It's still very dry, so I'm just gonna pour some more onto the tablespoon. And we're just gonna do this slowly and keep on mixing. And it's going to start becoming more thick again. Pour some more. So we're going to keep going, just keep mixing and slowly adding bits of water. And as you can see, it's becoming it's very dough-like. So we just want it to be a little bit more runny. I'm just going to do one more. A good stir. So you know when you've reached the best consistency when it's like this, like gloopy and it's slow, it falls off the spoon quite slowly, like that. Yep. Okay, so now that we've made the paste, I'm just going to clear the space. Okay, and like this, so we've got a nice working space and just going to pick up the card which is a fruit bar packet pack and we just need to take this front piece here just so we can make a base to put the jar on top of. Take your scissors and you can take it apart like this with the flaps peeling around or you can just cut straight into it. So we just need to make a rough square just like that and then the jar can go on top of here. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the jar. If you don't have a jar, you can also use a tin. So, but today we'll use the jar. So, this way you use your hands. This is a fun part. And we're just going to pick some gloop up like this. And we're going to just apply the paste all around the outside of the jar like this. Just feel around it, just cover all areas in a thin layer of paste. Just for the last bit, we need to put some paste on the bottom like that. And then we take our card flap and we're going to put the jar on top of the card. 
Now we are going to get the pieces of newspaper and we're going to start to wrap the jar with the newspaper. So, so even around the top, doesn't need to be neat, we're just filling in all of the gaps like this, sticking it to the jar. This is our base coat. So it should all stick. Okay. So now we just have it all covered like this. Oh, there's a little gap there. Some more piece. And we're going to get some more paste, get it in your hands, even just, yeah, in both your hands. And we're just going to slather it all over. We're going to mould the paper as well into it all, into the jar. So, like this, get some more. Yep, make it nice and thick. There we go, and try and smoothen it out. You can flatten it, just use your hands to really feel it and make it smooth. It's going to be messy and gloopy, but it's the fun part. So we're just trying to stick down any pieces that have come away. So again, it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be a base. Okay. Now we're going to use the white strips. And same process. We're going to just start from the top and wrap that around, keeping the white side out like this. And then I'm going to take some more paste and apply that onto the white piece all around. And just smoothing in all the dents and just moulding it around. Again, get some more paper. Wrap it around. Some more paste. And again, make sure the whole thing's covered in paste. And we're just going to continue just sticking the white pieces around so that it's completely white. I just need to do this top bit here. go for it really get all the paste as much paste as you can and just really chuck it on even like fold it in if it's if there's bits 
sticking out you can fold it into the hole and yep make sure it's sticky at the bottom There you can see it's as even as we can make it and then stick it to the bottom like this and then we're going to leave it to dry. It will take about four to five hours to dry so I'm going to go wash my hands. So now I've washed my hands nice and clean ready for the next stage but here's one I made earlier like this, look, the card's stuck and the paper's nice and dry. Now, I've used the newspaper only because I didn't have any white paper at the time, so this is absolutely fine to use also. It's a good example to show because it just means we'll need more paint. So I'll just put that down like that. And now we're going to make the features. So we're going to need some more flour, some more paste. Get your flour and get your spoon again. And yeah, just two big heaps from your tablespoon, like that. the flour to one side. Just going to put the paper as well, the rest of the paper into one side. Just always nice to have as much space as possible. Get the tub, get the water and again we're going to do the same as we did before where we just pour bits of water, tablespoon worth of water and pour it in and mix. So, yep, yeah, we're just going to keep doing that. Mix. Again, it's... Keep adding. So we're going for the same consistency as before, where it's like a gloopy paste. Give it a good mix. That's looking pretty gloop like and if you can't really see the consistency very well you can also test it with your fingers and it should feel tacky and you can just feel it okie doke so there we go now just put the water to the sides and we're gonna use our Tetra Pak papers for this we are just going to tear just like this into pieces that are around the size of your hand and then we're going to screw them up like this just to make it more malleable and easier to fit it into the shape that we want so like this and again just tearing and tear that again like that like this and scrunching it up and again scrunching okay so now we're gonna have around one two three four, around seven pieces that should that should do us for all the features so we're gonna start with the eyes so just get two pieces and pick up some paste and just yeah really just again scrunch it all in together mold it into each other and just work the paste into the paper until you've got a ball that stays together and we just make it into a ball shape 
And then I'm just gonna get another piece and I'm gonna leave this one flat. I'm just gonna dip it into the paste. We're gonna cover both sides of this piece of paper. And then I'm gonna pick up a ball and I'm gonna put it inside this piece. And we're just gonna wrap it like a present, like this, like that, and mold it together. And this just makes a more smooth eyeball like surface, like this. And then you'll have a bit at the end which will need this kind of flap bit like this. So we'll just keep it like that, as you can see. Some nice and gloopy. I'm just gonna leave it in there for now. And then, yeah, we're gonna do the same with another piece. Okay, again, just squeeze it in. Might be a bit tough on some edges, but you just, you just keep on pressing and molding until it's the roundness that you'd like. We're gonna get another piece of paper and flatten it out and apply the paste again on both sides of the paper, like this, just thin. And then pick up the ball again and do the same and wrap it up like a present and mold it. Mold it into the eyeball. And then, yeah, see if you're happy with the size. They don't have to be even. All depends on how your eyeballs want to look. But I'm happy with those. So I'm gonna put them in there to one side. Next, we're going to make the nose. So I'm just gonna use one little piece for that. So I'm gonna get a piece of paper, dip it in the paste and Again, just mould it to however you want your nose to be. So you might want it to be long and thin or small and thin. Or you might want it to be round. But I'm going to make mine small and thin. So I'm going to put it between my hands. I'm going to roll it to make like a little sausage shape. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna put that to one side with the eyes. And then I'm gonna get another piece. I'm gonna make the mouth. So again, paper, paste, slather it all over and just really get it in there. And then, to make the mouth, again, we're just gonna roll it into like a sausage shape in between your hands, like that, and just roll it. Lots of paste. And then, yeah, got like a long, thin sausage now. So we'll just put that again to one side. We're going to pick up a jar and place it on its side and what this does it acts as as a support for the jar so it doesn't roll whilst we're putting the features on so I'm going to start with the eyes so pick up your eyeballs and Stick a dollop of paste on the end, on both ends, like that. And we're just gonna put them together and squish them down onto the jar. And really mold it in. And then, yeah, we're gonna get some more paste, just bits of paste, small bits, and we're going to use that to fill in underneath 
to support the eyeballs. Yeah, so they're on nice and firmly. Next, we're going to get a little nose and again just dip the end in some more paste and we're going to stick it right under the bottom of the eyeballs where the eyes meet so as you can see here and it just fits it's a very small nose <laughs> which is nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with having the nose very small in between the eyeballs yeah and again we're gonna get some more paste with your hands and we're just gonna underneath we're going to fill the gap in with the paste to make the support for the nose. Like this. And now we're going to get the mouth. So again, get some more paste. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to bend it right in the middle so we're trying to make a smile shape again it doesn't need to be perfect it can be as wonky as you like however you want your smile to be like so and then again just hold it and we're going to dip the edges in the paste again like that going to pick up the jar and we're going to just again slot it slot it on the jar put it down and this we're going to get the ends of the mouth and we're going to press press it down press the edges down onto the jar. We're going to get more paste, again both fingers, and again just really paste it. Paste it down. And there we have it. So we're just going to put this to one side, on its side like this, and let it dry for about four to five hours again. And again, I'm going to go wash up, clean up. Okay, so now I've washed my hands and now it's time to paint the pot, which is dry. The one I made earlier. Here it is. As you can see, it's, you can just tap it and it's nice and hard, ready for us to paint. Okay, so to make the paint, we're going to need a paintbrush, a mixing tool, a teaspoon, a plate, and a mixing pot, and your colourings of choice. The flour, and some water, and your little man. <laughs> so I'm just going to get the teaspoon, and we're just going to, again, just take a mound of flour. We're just going to pop it into the mixing pot and then we're going to pick up the water and we're going to just pour just a splash into the mixing pot and as before just mix it around and make a runnier paste this time. So the consistency should be like paint. So it shouldn't be gloopy, it should be more runny. Just going to add a tiny bit more. Just a splash. Again, mix it around. And so yeah, it's runnier. Okay, so I'm just going to make the first colour 
which is going to be for the skin. So we're going to use the turmeric. We're just going to take the teaspoon and we're going to make a nice dollop on the plate. Just give that a wipe. So half a teaspoon into the paste. And then we're going to get the paintbrush and we're going to mix it in. And we're just going to mush it in like this so it makes, yeah, again, a paste. Now these colourings can stain, so just be careful if around fabric. Also turmeric, if it gets on your hands, might take a few days for it to wash out, but it's okay. It won't do any harm. Okay, so just going to make it a little bit more runny. Just add in a dash of water and then mushing it, blending it in together. And then, as you can see, it's like, looks like a paint. Okay, and now we're gonna start painting. So, we pick it up and we're just going to, gonna go over the whole of the jar, leaving the facial features still blank now if you want him to put another layer of paint on it's going to have to dry so because we can see the newspaper still underneath yeah we're going to do his nose as well be careful with the nose because it's could be quite delicate. So we're just gonna go in. Okay, so that's the first layer of the face. So if you wanted to do another coat of yellow, you can set it aside for half an hour. But now we're gonna do the eyes and the mouth. So just going to get a piece of spare paper just so we don't stain um, pop it on there okay now we're going to make the colour for the lips so I'm going to use the rest of the paste that I made from before and you can make some more if you need to and I'm going to take about half a teaspoon again and pop it on the plate and then take a teaspoon of that paste and pop it on and then get your paintbrush and the same as before mix it in okay now this is chilly so you need to be careful not to put your hands in your eyes if you get any on your hands because it can give a burning sensation and we're just yeah if you're happy with that colour for your lips then yeah we can start painting it on paint it on quite thick like that And fill in all the white bits and there you go <laughs> there's your mouth okay now to do the pupils all we need is the end of your paintbrush and your food coloring which I'm going for blue blue food coloring I'll be very careful because this does stain so you don't want to knock it over and then being very careful 
I'm going to put the pot on its side, but I'm going to keep my hand inside just to keep it secure. And I'm going to very gently, slowly, dip the end of a paintbrush until you reach the blue. And then just let it drip. And then we're going to put the end of a paintbrush into the middle of the eyeball like that and just hold it there and just make a small circle and then we're going to do the same if you find it easier you can just pour a little bit onto the plate like this and then it's there ready you can put it over the plate and again dip it and let it wait for it to drip if any and then pop it into the middle and slowly make a circle and then there you go I'm just going to let it dry like this and that's your pot finished I'm just going to quickly put the lids back on anything that can spill over like this and yes here you are and then after once it's dry you can put soil in it and put your hip yeah put your favorite herbs in there and then there you go here it is if you want to add, make another layer of paints, you can do that also, if it's not bright enough for you. If you need any more information, then just check out the video description. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed making your 3D biodegradable herb pot.